Uh, for a host name, it's a host name for this system. I'm going to call this Ubuntu 804 server. Uh, I hit the tab key to get to continue, or you could have just pressed enter. It's going to set up the clock, um, try to get the time from a network time server. You can select your time zone. Uh, I'm going to select Arizona. It's kind of an odd time zone for some strange reason. And it'll go through some more detecting. I'll pause the recording here. Now the next screen it's going to come to is it's going to want to partition the disks. Uh, and that sounds a little bit scary, but keep in mind that it's not actually doing anything at all to your hard drive. The um, uh, virtual machine is stored in a disk file, and the way this program works is it makes the um, uh, Ubuntu server, uh, fools Ubuntu server into thinking that disk file is actually a separate hard drive. So uh, you're not doing anything to your, your actual host hard drive. This is um, uh, purely um, uh, a, a mechanism for being able to run um, the um, uh, operating systems within this application. Uh, you're going to want to use guided, use entire disk. Um, there's no need to uh, do a manual um, uh, partition or anything else. So just uh, guided, use entire disk, and uh, press enter. Um, there should only be one disk to select given um, the um, uh, configuration that we've got going here. And it will figure some stuff out and then ask you to confirm. Um, you know, normally if you were installing this on a live system, then you would want to give pause to this because you would be about to um, format and erase your hard drive. So um, you need to actually tab um, to the, the yes to proceed and write these changes to disks. And as I say, this is not actually doing anything to your host hard drive, so this is a safe operation. And then it'll uh, begin formatting the partitions and installing the operating system. So I'll pause the recording here and come back at the next uh, screen. All right, and we're back. That took about 20 minutes. Uh, your mileage may vary depending on your processor speed and some other factors. Um, it may appear to hang. You can almost take a look down here uh, and see whether or not the disk drive light is blinking there um, or if the um, uh, CD-ROM icon uh, is lighting up. That'll tell you that things are going on, so don't give up on it if you think it's hung. Give it some time. Uh, the next thing it's asking for is the name for the new user, um, so I'm just going to put in um, a name here. Um, you could really pick anything. This is going to be the primary uh, system user. Um, it's not uh, the root user, though. The uh, root user is a different account, and if you're not sure what root user is yet because you're just learning Linux, that'll be a good thing to, to look up and learn about. Uh, but I'll enter a username here. That's going to be a so-called super user. Uh, and a login name for the account. Uh, this will work fine for me. And I, I, I'd recommend if um, uh, you know, you're not picking something you already know or, or it's pretty obvious that you write this down because um, uh, this can be a little bit tricky to recover. It's possible if you forget them. And then finally, passwords. Oops. So you need to choose a password and then re-enter it to verify. Uh, you almost definitely don't need to worry about this screen. Um, uh, because you're actually working through uh, virtual uh, the um, uh, uh, VMware uh, server. If, if you happen to have an outside proxy, you may need to fiddle around with this. I've never seen a case where you did. So you can just leave it blank. You can either press Enter or Tab to continue and then press Enter. It'll configure some more stuff, so I'm going to pause it again. And we're back. Once it finishes the base software installation, you have your choice of installing some additional server components. Uh, the DNS server, of course, uh, domain name service, um, uh, you, you would probably want to install that uh, in this situation if you were just interested in learning how to configure that. Um, you know, unless you happen to need a DNS server at your home network. Uh, LAMP server is the Linux, Apache, MySQL, uh, PHP scripting combination. I uh, give you a web server, um, a MySQL database, uh, and some additional scripting capabilities. Mail server, if you wanted to practice configuration of mail serving. Um, open SSH server, this is um, a, a handy one to install. 
this will allow you to um, um, connect to your, your uh, VMware server from your host using a, um, a, a, a secure shell uh, connection method, kind of like a Telnet session. Um, PostgreSQL database um, is uh, another kind of um, uh, SQL database um, that um, is sometimes used in place of MySQL. Uh, print server, uh, you can set up a Unix print server. And finally, you can set up a Samba file server. This allows the, the um, uh, Linux server to uh, share files with uh, uh, Windows systems. Now, the way you choose these, uh, be very careful about this. You can arrow up and down. And in order to actually select one, though, don't press Enter yet. In order to actually select one, press the space bar. Now, I'm going to install LAMP. And I'm going to install OpenSSH, because those are the two that I almost always, always use. Uh, and once you've selected all the ones that you want, then hit the Tab key. Uh, and make sure that you see those asterisks next to the uh, components that you want to install before you press uh, Enter. Because uh, if you, if you kind of miss it at this point, you either need to reinstall or, or do some additional installation hoops once this um, uh, primary installation um, completes. So I'm going to press continue, and it will go ahead and start installing those applications. Uh, I'm going to pause the recording again, and we'll come back uh, when it's time to reboot. It is going to ask if you want uh, to uh, um, set a password for the MySQL administrator if you selected the um, uh, if you selected the LAMP installation, uh, and it's probably a good idea to do that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and enter one here, uh, and then it'll ask you to confirm that. Otherwise, you can do that later after the installation is through. So let me pause again. And we're back. That pretty much completes the installation. What it would like you to do now is reboot. Um, and so I'm going to press the Continue button. In most cases, uh, the um, uh, operating system will, will boot, especially if you've got a newer computer. Uh, we'll see what happens on this one. This is an old computer. So let's see what happens when I press the Continue button and um, uh, let it reboot. And it'll finish the installation and restart the system. And it will give you some time to look there. And now you get this message that occasionally you run into on older computers, especially, uh, that um, uh, there's a problem with a CPU. And, and the reason for that is that this is uh, Ubuntu server uses a special version of the Linux, um, uh, Linux operating system um, to, um, uh, that manages memory. Um, and modern processors, uh, the newer processors, have um, a feature that uh, Ubuntu tries to call uh, that's a memory management feature. And if you have an older uh, processor, like a Pentium M, uh, or even on some newer processors, uh, you may find that it won't run the server kernel. But there is a way to fix this. And so follow along with me, and I'll show you how to get us out of this mess. What I need to do is actually reboot from the image. Uh, and that sounds easy enough, but uh, unfortunately, VMware uh, makes the um, uh, hard drive the first boot device. So we're going to have to get into setup. And that's a little bit tricky. Um, what it involves is resetting the virtual machine. As soon as the VMware screen starts to boot, you need to click in the window uh, when you see the VMware splash screen. And then right away, press F2 to get you into setup. And uh, especially if you have a faster computer, there's a very small window. So sometimes it takes two or three passes uh, to get that right. Having explained it, I'll try to see if I can catch it on the first time um, uh, or not. But again, what I'm going to do is reboot. Um, as soon as the VMware splash, splash screen shows up, I'm going to click my mouse inside that window to capture the uh, keyboard. Uh, and then I'm going to press the F2 key to enter the setup. So let's see what happens. And it looks like I was successful. I don't know if you saw that. But again, the VMware splash screen came up. I Right away, I clicked on that window uh, and then uh, hit the F2 key. And that enters the BIOS setup. Uh, and we need to arrow over here to boot. Um, and we need to go to the CD-ROM drive. And we just need to type in a plus sign. And that moves that CD-ROM up so it's the first boot device so that we're going to be able to boot off that um, uh, Ubuntu installation ISO file. Uh, 
Uh, and when we've done that, we can hit exit.